everyone to the program. We begin with Niger's Vice President, Professor Yemeshi Bajo, making a state visit to Kano for the launch of free compulsory education in the state. Also lined up in the Vice President's itinerary is the integration of Quranic education into modern education. The Vice President is also expected to attend the unveiling of a solar power technology. We have our correspondent, Idris Jibrin, who uh, joins us from the ancient city of Kano. Hello, Idris. Uh, what are the activities uh, lined up ahead of the Vice President's visit? I guess we'll try to get back uh, to Idris much later. Elsewhere, amidst the heated controversy on the mode of primaries and qualification of governorship aspirants in different political parties. Now, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is holding its primaries today in both Yenagoa and uh, that's in Bayasa State and Lokoja in Kogi State, respectively. Now, the primary is expected will see the emergence of the party's governorship candidates for the November 16th governorship elections in the two states. Uh, we join our guest, um, a PDP chief chain and a spokesperson for the party's presidential campaigning organization at the 2019 general elections for the party, Mr. Chid uh, Chidoka Osita. He joins us from our Buja studios. I uh, would like to welcome you to the program. What are your expectations on the primaries today, both in Kogi and Bayelsa? And, and what mode did your party decide? Well, thank you very much, and um, good afternoon to the um, viewers. Um, today, we're expecting a very successful primaries. Um, we're expecting very successful primaries because we've gone um, many steps in ensuring that the PDP in its metamorphosis, in, his, in the effort to reinvent the PDP, uh, we have adopted one very important and significant step for the party, which is the, the promotion of internal democracy. So what you see today, uh, if you saw the newspapers of yesterday, especially this day newspaper, we published the list of all the delegates that will be participating in this election. And this is because the party have decided since after our Port Harcourt Convention, where we saw a free and fair primaries conducted in atmosphere of no rancor, and after which all the candidates teamed up with all the aspirants, teamed up with the party candidate for the general election. We've learned that the best way to get the party to win elections is to ensure that we have credible primaries. So what, we are hap what is happening today is the indirect primaries, the use of delegates, delegates that are already known. 90 days to the date of this election, the party has already confirmed that the ward chairman, ward secretary, ward treasurers, and the ward um, woman leader and youth leader are statutory delegates from the ward to the state congress. Also, we have the state, the local government officers of the party. We have elected local government members of the party and then also um, a host of other dignitaries who have, like the former president in the case of Bayelsa, um, former senators, and all of that, uh, their names are published, and people know who they are uh, before the primaries. So it is in, in the effort to promote transparency in the adoption of this transparent method that PDP has um, more or less become gone beyond the remix of what the law says, because despite the fact that the president did not sign the electoral bill, we've gone beyond that to ensure that our primaries are very transparent. Let's Part of what at, you will see in these primaries Kogi today State. is... Let's, let's take a look at Kogi State first. Um, the contest is interesting. Um, among a former governor, a former um, governor's son, a former governor's in-law, a former governor's brother, uh, among a few others um, in the race for that state. And then we have Bayelsa, an even longer list. Uh, many people are really wondering how uh, things uh, would play out today. It shows you the strength of the brand. It shows the strength of the PDP brand. Um, 13 people have come out to run um, in Kogi State. Um, as you can see, uh, very eminent and very, very successful politicians are out running for the ticket of PDP. It shows you the power of the PDP brand. Uh, despite all the shenanigans in the last election, we were able to defeat incumbent governors in about three states. 
So it shows you that PDP is alive and well. That is what the Kogi and Bayelsa number of contestants are showing us. And I can tell you, because it is prepared, is in a very transparent process, the ballot papers they will be using tomorrow, will have the, they'll be using today, will have the photographs of all the aspirants in the, on the ballot paper. So anybody who is going to vote, you can thumbprint, you can tick, but you're able to see the candidate you want to vote for. And the, um, the ballots will be counted in the presence of everybody. So you will see whether you've won the primaries or not. So we are not worried about the number of contestants. What we are worried about is the integrity of the process. And PDP again has shown that um, after 20 years as a political party, we've learned lessons to promote internal democracy in, um, in the party. I must ask you, with regards to um, the primaries in Bielsa states, there were a few um, thoughts or it wasn't quite clear where it would take place uh, with regards to location. Can you uh, clarify where that is taking place in Yenagua, Bielsa state today? Yeah, it's taking place in Yenagua, Bielsa. The particular location? Um, I, I, I don't know the name of the location correctly, but that location that was agreed upon and approved by the NWC is where it is taking place today. Let's go back to um, talking about uh, the example for, uh, of Kogi State. Um, we have, uh, of course, a former governor who was succeeded by the current governor of Kogi State who has clinched the party's ticket for the All Progressives Congress. What do you think the chances are, and this is if he emerges uh, as your ticket, the candidate for uh, Kogi, what the PDP chances are for Kogi elections come November the 16th? Well, I want to say that I really do not want to speculate about who will emerge at the primaries and what will be the, um, the party's fate in the election. What is most important is that once the PDP people of Kogi are united after the primaries, once they agree that the process has been free and fair, and all the candidates are ready to work with who, all the aspirants ready to work with who has emerged in the process, I can assure you, Kogi State will become a PDP state in November. Um, so it doesn't matter whether it is the gov former governor or the senator or other aspirants. What is important is that the delegates in, PD in, in Kogi State, whoever they choose today and chosen from a transparent process, I can assure you that person will be the next governor of Kogi State. We've been talking to the PDP Chief Tain, a uh, spokesperson of the party's presidential campaign organization at the 2019 general elections. Mr. Chirika Osita, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much.